Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the command officer, welcome to Second Network Battalion Change of Command Ceremony, where Lieutenant Colonel Carl W. Schlegel will relinquish command to Lieutenant Colonel Andrew S. Walker. Today's ceremony is being executed by the officers and Marines of Second Network Battalion. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by Lieutenant Elude Mwange, Chaplain, United States Navy. Let us pray. Almighty God, we salute you this morning for our CEO who has made a great impact in U.S. Marine Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Shereo. His smart brain and strong muscles have made us even better in our warfare throughout the world. Since the year 2000, Lieutenant Colonel Shereo has been rising one rank after another and advancing in his knowledge and skills. Surely this is an officer U.S. Marine Corps does not easily relieve from duty. But as the Bible tells us, there is time and a season for everything. We also thank you for his beautiful and dependable wife and lovely children who, gave, who have made him to accomplish his mission with honor, courage, and commitment for 23 years of faithful and dedicated service. As he gets relieved from the watch, we pray that you may continue to bless him in his next chapter of his life. May this day mark the beginning of his joy and pride in his extraordinary personal awards and decorations. Also remind us that the mission is still on as Lieutenant Colonel Henry Walker poses to assume the command we pray that he may continue building on the foundations that Lieutenant Shrego has established. May you prepare him to lead the second network battalion to continue providing unshakable, secure cyber security around the world for seven desires. May you bless his amazing wife and adorable children to be assured that to lean on when physically and emotionally down. Now, as we commence, we extend our invitation to you to join us in this celebration as a heavenly and earthly king. All this we ask in your name, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Present day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle loaded muskets of yesterday. In those early days, the line of battle was just that, a line of two or three ranks and looked much like the parade formation you will see today. The adjutant forms the line for battle. The adjutant for today's ceremony is First Lieutenant Joseph C. Benson. Sound! Engine is gone! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. Raise it. Colors. Ready? Cut.
ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Receive the report. Aye, sir. Report. Headquarters company, all present or accounted for. Attachment A, all present or accounted for. Attachment B, all present or accounted for. Attachment C, all present or accounted for. Support detachment Cherry Point, all present and or accounted for. Support detachment South Carolina, all present or accounted for. Support detachment Albany, all present or accounted for, sir. Support detachment Blunt Island, all present or accounted for. Ladies and gentlemen, now taking his position in the reviewing area is the command officer of 2nd Network Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Carl W. Schlegel. Freeze it! Earth! Freeze it! Go! Now taking his place in the reviewing area is Lieutenant Colonel Andrew S. Walker. Master Gunnery Sergeant, deliver the colors to the commanding officer. The change of command ceremony you are witnessing is an honored product of the rich heritage of our Corps, designed to strengthen authority and respect, which is vital to any military organization. Custom has established that this ceremony be formal and impressive. The heart of the ceremony is the passing of the organizational color by the commander being relieved to the incoming commander. Delivering the colors to the command officer is the battalion senior enlisted advisor, Master Gunnery Sergeant Eddie W. Dowdell. The passing of the color signifies the transfer of command, which entails the transfer of total accountability, authority, and responsibility from one individual to another. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the passing of the colors. Attention orders from Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant Colonel Carl W. Schlegel. Effective 10 hundred, 9 June 2023, you will stand relieved from your duties as the Command Officer of 2nd Network Battalion. Signed, David H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps. Attention orders from Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant Colonel Andrew S. Walker. Effective 10 hundred, 9 June 2023, you are directed to assume the duties as Command Officer of 2nd Network Battalion. Signed, David H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Please be seated. Ready? Cut. Parade! Press! Ladies and gentlemen, the Command Officer of Marine Corps Cyber Space Operations Group, Colonel Thomas J. Cleaver. Y'all don't mind, I'll uh, forego the uh, microphone here. I think uh, we're small enough. And, uh, if you'll oblige me, I'll try to take you to church here just for a few minutes, all right? <laughs> it is a good day today. It's a good day for a lot of reasons. First, we got these Marines out here on in formation looking sharp. We've got the mighty band here supporting this event. Carl, it's good to you. It's always good to have the band. You <laughs> made it. Good job. Uh, it's a good day to be here. Because not only are we celebrating a change of command and retirement, we are standing on the decks of this warship right here, uh, doing a Marine Corps ceremony. 
piece of machinery that was designed specifically to rain hate and discontent upon our adversaries. Uh, supported the Guadalcanal campaign, Philippine Sea, Iwo Jima campaign. Uh, a lot of history on this deck. And if uh, being here today doesn't give you chicken skin, uh, then I would argue you're not a, a warm-blooded mammal, in my uh, humble opinion. I don't know about you, but uh, I kind of want to run five miles and, and punch something right now. <laughs> Pretty excited. But today's a good day. Not only is it, uh, the weather beautiful, uh, we can't say the same up there in Northern Virginia. Uh, the smoke from the wildfires is a real thing up there. I uh, wasn't able to PT outside yesterday, but I uh, drove five hours south yesterday and was able to PT outside this morning here in uh, mighty Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, it's a good day because we're on this uh, mighty battleship, the sacred ground. It's a good day because we're going to acknowledge Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Walker, uh, board screen command selected battalion commander, uh, just assumed command of second network battalion, and, and that is uh, something certainly to celebrate. We're also here to acknowledge uh, Lieutenant Colonel Schlegel for successful uh, tour of command as the first CO at second network battalion, and uh, Mr. Gardner, sir, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't. Add some additional comments regarding uh, Colonel Ten Colonel Schlegel's 20 years of honorable service, and I'll talk to his retirement just for a little bit. Uh, if you'll forgive me if I steal any of your thunder, I, I apologize ahead of time. So. I'm sure they were ready to get out of the That's sun. right. Yeah. <laughs> so to that end, I'm going to talk uh, pretty fast here because it is pretty hot out here on the deck. Um, first thing I'd like to do is welcome the families. Uh, we have a lot of families here. I'll start with the Walkers. Andrew's joined uh, by his wife, Kristen and his children, Mackenzie and Boyd. Welcome. And then we have the parents in from mighty Alabama. And uh, what's interesting is they're not Auburn fans, they're not Alabama fans, but they're United States Naval Academy fans, which uh, I support that 100%, as Andrew does as well, I'm sure. So uh, Sam and Kathy, welcome. It's good to have you here. I'd also like to welcome Team Schlegel. He came in force today. <laughs> Carl's joined by his wife, Laura. Children Preston and Boyd. I'm uh, sorry, Preston and Allison. I'm sorry. Uh, good to good to see you all here today. And then uh, we also have the in-laws, the Caros, and from Newport News, Virginia. Uh, great talking to you earlier. And then uh, Robert and Miss Helen, uh, in from uh, mighty Indiana. So, uh, we were talking earlier. That's a familiar ground for, for Team Cleaver as well. And it's good to have y'all. So uh, families, uh, friends. Uh, Marines, uh, our mighty Fed students that are present here today, who we lean on every day, uh, and any other Marines, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Taylor, and others that are here today, it's good to have you. I'm seeing maneuver quickly, because I'm going to go a little bit out of order, uh, just because we do have a retirement ceremony uh, on the back end of this, and so I'd like to do start by acknowledging Andrew. Andrew, congratulations. Andrew, Kristen, welcome aboard. Job well done. Um, when you look at uh, Andrew's uh, bio, you can see that he is extremely well qualified to assume command of 2nd Network Battalion. And the theme I think throughout all our comments here today is that there are many convergent points between Andrew's career, my career, uh, Carl's career, and some others here in the audience, which, which is pretty interesting. But Andrew and I, we have a common background, United States Naval Academy. Uh, we were both instructors at the comm school. Uh, we were both in command of Alpha Company at 8th Com Battalion, and both operation officers at 8th Com Battalion. So a lot of a common background there. But Andrew also served and 8th Marines in the early 2000s. And those of us that remember, uh, that was a uh, that was a stressful time for all of us. And uh, Andrew was the uh, combo for 8th Marines, and I believe 1st Battalion 8th Marines, did I get that right? Uh, and he deployed to uh, Iraq, Operation OIF in the early 2000s, and OEF as well. So he comes uh, with a ton of credibility, a ton of operational experience, and uh, in the short time that I've known Andrew, there's no doubt in my military mind that he's the right guy to take 2nd Network Battalion to the next level. He just came from IC4, and in my mind that's very significant because the type of work that we do, uh, understanding how to do enterprise operations, network modernization, understanding the language that we use when we're supporting the enterprise is extremely important. So Andrew, Kristen, I want to uh, once again say welcome aboard, and uh, we're really excited to have you on the team. All right. All right. <laughs> I was preparing for my, my remarks for Carl, and I was thinking to myself, well, maybe I should say this. I said, no, I 
a couple iterations. Yeah, it's been a fun time. Though. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Second Network Battalion. Um, two years ago, there we were. I just took command of Cyber Operations Group. And then Carl, you took command of Second Network Battalion a couple months before me. And Carl came to me, uh, he had a lot of questions, but I could sum them up in three big ones. He asked me, uh, where's my gear, where's my people, and what's my mission? And uh, in summary, my answer to him was, Carl, I don't know the answers to those questions right now, but I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> and so uh, we use an analogy. We say uh, we build a plane while we're flying it. And I think that's entirely appropriate for all uh, the network battalion CEOs and Second uh, we gave Carl a plane that had one wing, uh, a broken motor, and no landing gear, and we said go. And uh, I tell you what, Carl has been incredibly aggressive in uh, generating a value proposition, uh, pursuing resources for his battalion, and uh, getting Second Network Battalion to a place that it needs to be. And as a battalion commander, you're pressing hard, right, because you want things done tomorrow. That's exactly how you should be as a, as a, a battalion CEO. It's hard to be patient, but uh, Carl and I, we've had several discussions here over the last few weeks. Uh, when you look at incremental success over time, when you look back at what Carl's done over the last two years, it's been incredibly significant. Being a network battalion CEO is deceivingly hard. And uh, what I thought was fascinating is when they did the report here, uh, not only did the uh, folks from Camp Lejeune report in, that the folks from Cherry Point, the folks from Vaughan Island, the folks from Bahrain, uh, Hampton Roads. There are seven nodes that Second Network Battalion supports up and down the eastern coast. And just to make it a little more complicated, they also support Bahrain. For reasons beyond my understanding, that's what they do. <laughs> so the span of control is immense. Uh, the span of influence is immense. And uh, Carl, you've uh, hit a home run in every regard. The other aspect about uh, Second Network Battalion that I think is probably undersold is uh, their operational impact to the larger Marine Corps. I'm just citing a few examples. Hurricane Ida, we all remember that, came up the East Coast. At the Macaw, we were tracking that closely because that was going to impact almost every one of those seven nodes on the Eastern Coast that Carl supports. And we're talking about data centers getting flooded, uh, which means uh, Marines up and down the Enterprise there on the Eastern Coast were not able to their day-to-day -day operations. Carl, uh, he commanded and controlled that entire effort, uh, was tracking the status of the weather, uh, the data centers, and uh, staying in touch with our Marines up and down the East Coast. We also sent Marines to Norway. Uh, we see uh, their Operation Cold Response. Uh, TUMAF sent a bunch of Marines out there, uh, tangentially tied to the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And, uh, we did some extend operations in support of our users out there, uh, which I thought was incredibly successful. And also, we did uh, McSend operations to support a WTI. Groundbreaking work, a service level training exercise, probably the highest visibility exercise that we have in the United States Marine Corps, CONUS anyway. And those are just three examples of uh, things that Carl did to uh, not only refine the mission of his battalion, but to generate a value proposition to the larger Marine Corps. So Carl, uh, job well done. Job well done. Carl's retiring today. Mr. Gardner, I failed to recognize him up front. Uh, SES Gardner, he's going to be the retiring officer, so I'll try not to steal this thunder. Uh, real quickly, Mr. Gardner joined the Air Force in 1971, which was a tough time to come into the military. Uh, he's been part of Army Material Command for a long time, uh, since before I was born. And uh, he also supported Operation Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and uh, supporting our United States military for a long time. I'm sure you're a great patriot and it's an honor to have you. Pivoting real quickly though to Carl's retirement. 20 years of faithful and honorable service. That says a lot. That says a heck of a lot. You look quickly at Carl's career. Our convergence point was Comp Squadron 18. Near and dear to my heart, former CEO of Comp Squadron 18. Carl is a company commander and a CEO out there in Okinawa, Japan. Right, so he served overseas. He was also part of 2nd Marines in the early 2000s, deployed to OIF twice. A ton of operational experience. He's been downrange in harm's way on at least two occasions. He was MOI at Norwich University. Uh, he 
Export 6 fleet in Naples, Italy. And it was also the, uh, the S6, or the D6, I guess, for a second there. I think what that ties to is uh, Carl's got nautical roots. Uh, we call ourselves Fleet Marine Force. Uh, we like to say we conduct uh, maritime maneuver at sea. And uh, Carl certainly pushed those efforts during his time as 2nd Network Battalion to see what we can do uh, from a Macaw Network Battalion perspective at the Sport Maritime Operation. Carl, you got a lot to be proud of. Uh, you and your wife, Laura, have been through an awful heck of a lot. On behalf of myself, my family, the Marine Corps Cyber Operations Group, and our United States Marine Corps, I want to publicly thank you for all your service over the last 20 years. Job well done, and we will assume the watch. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and Semper Fidelis. Morning. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I actually have to because the ceremony is a little different. We're gonna talk twice. The first one's gonna be a little bit uh, short. Mr. Gardner, thank you again for coming. Uh, but we'll talk more, of course, later. Colonel Cleaver, thank you for the opening remarks and, and the comments that you made. Uh, it, it really does mean a lot to me and my family, and of course the Marines that have been out here and have been rolling real hard. Our federal civilian employees and our contractors that have been doing this for the last over 18 months. Uh, there's a lot that really took place to make Second Network Battalion what it is. Um, but before I go into it, real quick, Marines, to say, you know, kind of doing that ease thing. Check it out. I don't want to pass it out. Do, do one of those things. It's all right. Come on. Because I'm not in command, so why not? Uh, uh, but uh, also, give it up for the division band. Right? Thank you very much for coming out here. Man of my own heart. Started with 2nd Marine Division. Loved every bit of it. So having you all here today means a lot to me, again, and my family. So thank you. The ceremony is what it is without having the band. Uh, we got a lot of firsts for 2nd Network Battalion. A lot of firsts. I'm trying to figure out a morning report coming in from day one. How do I do this? One of one. Where does it go? Uh, to grow in the battalion. To actually having not only our birthday ball, where for the most of the formation, this was their first birthday ball that they had attended due to COVID and other things, but standing up a battalion in the midst of COVID. This is the first ceremony that's actually represented with 2nd Network Battalion Marines, and this color guard is made up of Marines of 2nd Network Battalion for the first time today, here. That means a lot to me, because it shows how the battalion continues to grow in its capabilities, not only in a visual perspective, but able to understand our capabilities. And I'll be honest, a network battalion, a lot of people are like, what, what in the world does that do? You start thinking of cyberspace, you start trying to figure out what that is, what does that mean? You have three layers. You got the physical stuff, logical stuff, and the persona layer. Colonel Cleaver talked a little bit about the history of this particular platform, this ship itself, the battleship, 15 battle stars. As you leave the ship and you go out there a little bit more, you're going to notice there's a little placard on the wall that talks about Iwo Jima. The role that this ship played during that battle was to provide naval gunfire support for a landing craft of, of Marines and forces to take that island. That overwatch, that capability that this ship provided during that early portions of that battle is what we face in today's world in cyberspace. These Marines and our civilians and our contractors are there to provide that early warning capability, that early aspect within cyberspace to ensure that we are blocking and fighting for that next advancing force on the battlefield. That is what we do. It has been very, it's been a wonderful experience and I have loved every minute of it. The challenges aside. And even for the Marines, they heard me talk yesterday, and I know you're worried about them being hot. I'm not, because yesterday we were in the pool and they drank a lot of water, so it was just fine. <laughs> um, again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other aspect that Colonel Cleaver talked about was how our, our, our paths have crossed. What was interesting is not only operationally side on, on the comm squadron and throughout our, our careers. Uh, but there I was, lonely second lieutenant, checking into comm school. And wouldn't you know, my fat ad happened to be Captain Cleaver at that time frame. Guess who the course director was? Mr. or at that time, Major Duyet. So 
So my deputy commander for 2nd Network Battalion was the course director. And, I, and I'll tell you what, as a lieutenant, I stood in front of that desk, hit my rear end chewed left and right, being on academic probation, everything else you can imagine. Uh, but it's very interesting, come 19 years later, and both these two gentlemen stand here today with us uh, in wonderful uh, uh, capabilities and positions. So Tom, thank you again for everything that you've done, your successful career, and then continuing to carry that torch to the brain for a long time. Colonel Peter, thank you for everything and all your guidance. Um, for Andrew, Jennifer Walker, you and your family, enjoy. It's going to go fast. It's going to be a lot of long hours, a lot of time on the road. Uh, they've been here almost about, they've been to Camp Lejeune plenty of times, but been here about three weeks, and I think he's been home maybe three days. Uh, we've been out and around, traveling around, trying to make sure that we're carrying that water, carrying that weight, carrying the message of what it is, what we do, and what we're able to deliver moving forward. So, Andrew, thank you. Thank you. Making the trip, make the opportunity, make the event special. Um, same same Colonel Schlegel and the Colonel of the band. Thanks. Great opportunity to acknowledge the band. Appreciate y'all being out here. Uh, sure, we've had a couple times, a couple times to talk. I appreciate you and trust me with the battalions. I will, I will take care of the leads as soon as the organization as, as you ask me to do. Colonel Schlegel, Colonel. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Honorable Christopher Gardner. Battalion! Anarchy! Chen! Conor, Archer, Chen. Officer to be awarded! And retired! Center! March! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the reading of the award. This is the certified that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, Gold Star, in lieu of second award to Lieutenant Colonel Carl W. Schlegel, United States Marine Corps, for his services set forth in the following citation. Four, understanding meritorious achievement while serving as the command officer of 2nd Network Battalion, Marine Corps Cyberspace Operation Group, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, Forum, June 2021 to June 2023. Throughout this period, Lieutenant Colonel Schlegel's energetic leadership and tireless devotion to duty enabled delivery of defense of the Marine Corps Enterprise Network supporting over 40,000 personnel, operating across two strategic geographic locations and the eastern region of the United States. His insight and in indefatigable drive as he assumed command and activated the 2nd Network Battalion were instrumental in the in mission and oper oper operationalization my apologies, the Marine Corps Enterprise Network at the wharf as the Warfighting Support Network of Choice. Lieutenant Colonel Schlegel provided key guidance and oversight for network modernization and the growth and expansion of defensive cyberspace capabilities. He created a synthesis of existing support elements that integrated communication network across a wide geographic area in support of many discrete commands. With a variety of operational support requirements, his efforts 
strengthen command and control and communication to new levels, while upholding the same high standard of support to all customers. Lieutenant Colonel Schlegel's superior performance of duty culminated in his 20 years of honorable and dedicated military service. His exceptional professionalism, dynamic direction, and loyal dedication to duty, Lieutenant Colonel Schlegel reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest tradition of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Signed, R.P. Heritage, Major General, U.S. Marine Corps Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Cyberspace Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn.